Good morning, Clayton. My name is Eric. I am from California. Uh, currently an out-of-state investor investing in the Little Rock metro area. My question for you is in regards to seller financing. Uh, what is your thoughts on it? Um, the best way to structure seller financing? I'm in a situation as to where conventional financing um, has depleted my cash on hand. Um, so I am trying to go a little bit different route. Uh, any advice is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Uh, yeah, so, okay. One thing you talked about, your big issue right now, Eric, is that, well, let me answer it this way. So you want to understand seller financing. When is the best time to use seller financing for rental real estate? Uh, how how to best structure seller financing for rental real estate? All great questions. Uh, and we'll get to those here in this this answer. But first, I just want to say you're up against a 10 property wall, it seems, when it comes to conventional financing. Of course, you know, traditional financing, you can only get those 10 properties under the law, unfortunately, using a traditional bank. That always puts a lot of investors, you know, banging their heads against the wall. Uh, and it's really frustrating. I understand that. But there is one other thing to do besides seller financing. And before we get to seller financing, and that is to use uh, non-recourse financing. Now, we have full videos here on the channel about non-recourse financing, Eric. So please check those videos out. I think you might find those really useful. With non-recourse financing, of course, they don't care about you, the borrower. They care about the asset itself. Now, at Morris Invest, we are able to get lower interest rates because we we work with a certain set of banks on our new construction properties for our clients. Uh, so Eric, if that's of interest to you in acquiring out-of-state properties, uh, where we build our properties in West Texas and the best school districts in the state. Um, and uh, we have non-recourse financing options available on our new construction duplexes and single families. Um, so, and they have an internal rate of return about 18% minimum, and it goes much higher than that. Uh, just, you know, throw, throwing that out there. But if you do non-recourse financing on your own, be prepared to pay a little bit more for interest, uh, interest rates um, if you do it on your own. Uh, but again, it's not tied to you personally, and it also allows you to buy the property outside of your personal name. I mean, you can buy it in an LLC, right? They, in fact, want you to do that when you're doing non-recourse financing. So that's just my one thought on that. Now, seller financing. Seller financing allows you, someone, a seller, to sell their property as is without having to meet any lender's appraisal requirements. You know, owner financing, also known as seller financing, lets buyers pay for a new home without relying on one of those conventional mortgages. And instead, the homeowner, the seller, you know, finances the purchase often at a higher interest rate than the current mortgage rates and maybe has a balloon payment due after at least five years. Now, this can totally simplify the process because you're not, of course, then really involving a bank. You're not having to deal with the bank in the process. It cuts down on the paperwork, of course, to do seller financing. And it certainly eliminates the need to do any kind of a lender appraisal, inspection, all of those things uh, you can do with seller financing. Now, just like a conventional mortgage, owner financing involves making a down payment on a property, paying off the rest over time. So if you, Eric, are trying to structure a seller financing deal with someone who's willing to put up a private note for you, great, that's wonderful. I, you know, I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, I can't give you investment advice or financial advice on how to best structure one of these types of loans. It really needs to come down to what you're most comfortable with. Now, I've done a lot of seller financing deals over the years, and I would say you may consider doing what a lot of investors do, like if they're going to buy a bunch of properties, right? Five years is a good amount of time. Certainly less than five years is how much time it should take to pay off that property. So five years, perhaps as a balloon note, you know, uh, you can get better interest rates by having it be five years, less amount of time. You're not doing a 30-year note. Totally up to you, uh, but I've done five-year notes, then of course a balloon payment after that. But in that amount of time, there's no prepayment penalty. As Susan Lassiter Lyons likes to say, she's the author of the great book called Getting the Money. She says, never, ever. She said, run the other way. Run the other way if anyone ever tells you that there's a prepayment penalty. In fact, give them the middle finger <laughs> because come on, really? I'm going to pay this back to you more quickly. It'll, it enables you as the lender to recycle that money and make more money, get it back out there, deploy that capital again and get a great return. So that's ridiculous, a prepayment penalty. I just would run away from that as, a, as an option in your seller financing terms. 
don't do that, don't agree to that. Um, and yes, pl placing a down payment on the property, paying off the rest over time, five years, not a bad idea because in that amount of time, of course, the tenant is gonna be paying that, that money back. And so you almost pretend like you don't even have the property, right? The tenant's paying the, the rent and paying your mortgage, your five-year note. So you're probably, the way you structure it, you're almost gonna take the full rent amount, I would think, and pay off that mortgage. So like, again, you don't even, it's like almost like you don't even have this cash flow at all. You don't even have this property. Although you do, it's in your asset column. You're not really making any money on it because you're paying the mortgage back and the tenant is paying that mortgage. And then after five years or three and a half years or whatever it is, boom, suddenly that mortgage is paid off and now that property is fully cash flowing for you. That's what I've done. I know a lot of investors have done that. I have a friend who did this with a hundred properties and he bought like 20, then he bought another 20. And so they were structured and staggered over time. And then what happened was after that first 20, after five years were paid off by the tenants, boom, now he's got 20 properties that are cash flowing. And then a few months later, the next batch of 20 started cash flowing because now they're all paid off. It's a great feeling. So again, explore a couple of those options, Eric. I mean, non-recourse financing would be my first bet, especially um, because that enables you to work with still a bank, right? They're going to do a full appraisal on it. They're not, they don't care about you. They care about the asset, which is almost like a third set of eyeballs on this, right? They're, they're basically saying, hey, we've vetted this property. We've watched the construction unfold. We've seen the cash flow that this property has. We've seen, we worked with the property management company they, where they placed the tenant in the property. So to, for you as an investor, that's like gold, right? Because like the bank is fully signed off on this property. And if you disappear, they don't care. I mean, it goes right in their portfolio because they've already deemed it a great asset. So again, non-recourse would be my first stop on this journey. And then maybe structuring seller financing the way that I just laid out is how I would do it. Uh, but again, uh, to each their own. But thank you for that question, Eric. That's maybe the first seller financing question we've had on the show in a long, long time. So thank you. Thank you for that. Well, if you have a question, feel free to leave it uh, on our voicemail line. Just go to morrisinvest.com and there's a big microphone on the right side of the screen right there. Just click that and leave us a 30 second voicemail question. And my goal is to try to be able to answer them. I hope I give you a, a solid answer here, or at least point you in the right direction, and give you some guidance in that regard. So thank you guys so much for your great questions. Now go out there, take action, become a real estate investor. I believe it's the number one way to build wealth. We'll see you next time, everyone.